So, uh, this is my uh, second lecture on uh, regression models uh, with autocorrelated errors and uh, here is the content of this uh, topic. Uh, we already talked about uh, uh, source and effect of autocorrelation in the regression model and uh, in the previous class we uh, started talking about this uh, how to detect the presence of autocorrelation and uh, uh, we will be talking about uh, parameter estimation uh, in the presence of autocorrelation in the model. So, uh, let me repeat uh, the objective of this uh, topic is that in, in simple linear regression model or in the multiple linear regression model, uh, we make uh, several assumptions on the uh, error terms um, like uh, expectation of epsilon is equal to 0, variance of epsilon is equal to sigma square and uh, the error terms are uh, uncorrelated and also we uh, make uh, assumption on uh, the normality of the uh, error terms that uh, epsilon i follows normal distribution uh, with parameter uh, 0 and uh, sigma square. So, this is the these are the assumptions we make uh, while fitting a simple uh, linear regression model or multiple linear regression model uh, using uh, least square technique, but uh, the problem is that you know when the data are collected uh, sequentially in time, the assumption of independence of error term may not be true. That means, while you are collecting the observation uh, sequentially in time, the observations might not be independent, okay, which implies that the error terms epsilon i, uh, they are not independent and there exists some sort of you know autocorrelation uh, between the errors. So, let me uh, write down the formal definition of uh, uh, autocorrelation that uh, you know already. So, errors are autocorrelated or sometimes we call uh, serially correlated means the correlation uh, between errors is steps apart are always the same. That means, uh, the correlation between epsilon u and epsilon u plus s is equal to uh, we denote this by I mean this is not 0 uh, and this we denote by rho s okay? and this is for s equal to 1 to like this. Okay, so, this is what we mean by uh, the autocorrelation in the error term the error are correlated or serially correlated means uh, correlation between errors s step apart are always the same. Okay, so, we talked about uh, the, uh, the source of this uh, autocorrelation and uh, the effect of uh, autocorrelation in the previous class and uh, we were talking about uh, uh, how to detect uh, the presence of autocorrelation. Uh, once you are given a time series data, uh, we suspect that there exists autocorrelation, but we have to test uh, whether 
autocorrelation really exist or not. That means, whether the error terms are correlated or not. Uh, for that, that we, we talked about uh, our statistical test called uh, Darwin uh, Watson test and we could not finish that in the last class. So, we will sort of uh, uh, repeat that thing uh, today again. So, here is the slide from my previous uh, class that the Darwin Watson test. So, we want to fit a model. So, this is a multiple linear regression model by using the least square technique to the observations this. This could be a time series data that means, the observations are taken uh, sequentially in time. So, what we usually assume is that we assume that this uh, epsilon the area term follows normal distribution with 0 sigma square. That means, we assume that all the correlation rho s this is the correlation between errors s step apart that is 0 that is what we assume. Okay. Now, here what we want to test is that we want to test whether this assumption is justified or not. Okay. So, here is the hypothesis to test that we test the hypothesis null hypothesis that uh, rho s is equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis that rho s equal to rho to the power of s. Uh, basically, we want to test whether this is equal to 0 against whether rho s is greater than 0 or less than 0 or not equal to 0. So, greater than 0 means uh, it's a positive autocorrelation, rho s less than 0 means a negative uh, autocorrelation and not equal to 0 means autocorrelation exist. Now, what is why this particular form rho to the power of s that I explained this uh, comes from the assumption that the uh, errors are uh, having uh, I mean the uh, this is the errors are first order autoregressive error. Okay. That means, uh, you can regress epsilon u on epsilon u minus 1 that is for the first order autoregressive error. Well, so, we assume that the this is true for the for error terms and uh, where z u is uh, is again the error term for this uh, regression model which follows normal 0 sigma square and uh, z u is independent of uh, epsilon u minus 1 epsilon u minus 2 or the, all the previous terms and uh, uh, it is independent of z u minus 1 z u minus 2 and uh, to I explained you know, how to get uh, this form in the previous class. Please refer, refer my previous lecture for this one. Uh, this is coming from uh, the assumption of first order auto regressive uh, uh, assumption. Now, to test this hypothesis, so we are trying to test the hypothesis whether the uh, correlation between the errors which are a step apart uh, is equal to 0 or that is equal to rho to the power of s. To test this hypothesis we what we do is that we consider this Darwin Watson uh, test statistic. Now, this involves you know uh, the difference of residuals successive residuals as you can see here, but how to get them. So, here it says that you first uh, fit a regression model using ordinary least square technique assuming that all the assumptions are true on error term and then compute uh, the residual once you have once you fit this model what you get is that you get y hat is equal to x beta hat. So, you have the fitted model and once you have the fitted model you can compute E which is equal to y minus y hat. So, th this is the observed and this is the estimated response and so you have all uh, the residuals. Okay. 
and then you form this uh, uh, test statistic. And uh, it is known that uh, this distribution of d lies between 0 and 4 and it is symmetric about uh, about 2. Now, we are trying to test this hypothesis based on this uh, uh, and, and the test statistic to test this hypothesis is this one suggested by Darwin and Watson. Now, let me talk about the critical region you know uh, how to decide uh, whether to accept or reject this null hypothesis based on uh, this uh, d value. So, here is the uh, first case. So, one sided test against the alternative. So, what uh, see we started with the hypothesis like h naught that rho s is equal to 0 against h 1 that rho s is equal to rho to the power of s. Okay. Now, uh, we are testing the hypothesis which is rho equal to 0 against rho is greater than 0. So, if this is suppose this is true, then rho s is also greater than 0. right? That means, for all s, uh, yeah, for all s, s equal from s is 1 to anything. So, uh, testing this hypothesis uh, is same as testing this hypothesis. Okay. Once rho is equal to 0, if the null hypothesis is 0, then rho s is going to be 0. If the alternative hypothesis is true, that means rho is greater than 0, uh, then the original hypothesis says that rho s is greater than 0. Uh, that means, uh, the, dat the data has you know positive autocorrelation well. So, you have the Darwin Watson uh, test statistics value d and if d is less than d l, then it says that you reject uh, h naught, d is greater than d, a, d u, uh, then you accept h naught and if it is between d l and d u, the test is inconclusive. Now, let me talk a little bit about uh, what is this d l, this d uh, lower value and d upper value. Uh, there is a table for uh, d, d table, uh, there you will get uh, this d l and d u value uh, for different n uh, depending on how many observations are there. Uh, so, for different n and for different alpha, the level of significance. Okay. So, say for example, n equal to 20 in our previous uh, example on uh, soft drink concentration uh, cell, uh, you will get the d l value uh, based on the ch uh, different choices of alpha. Okay. So, there, is, there exists a table for uh, this d low and d up value. Well, so, if d the observed uh, d value is in between uh, d l and d u, then it, the test is inconclusive. Uh, I talked about the significance of why uh, we reject the null hypothesis h naught when the d value is small. Okay. So, the d value you know what is d right, d is uh, d is e u minus e u minus 1 square by e u square right 1 to n minus 1 perhaps and this is 2 to n no this is till n okay uh, so, if d value is small, we reject the null hypothesis. That means, we accept the alternative hypothesis. That means, we say there exists a positive autocorrelation. 
So, when d is small, there exist positive autocorrelation. Now, if you can recall uh, the scatter plot for uh, d i and uh, against d i minus 1. So, if you see uh, the scatter plot like this, we say the there exist positive autocorrelation that means, E i increases with E i minus 1. Uh, so, the i th observation depends on i minus 1 th observations right. Uh, there is a correlation between the successive observations. So, if the data are centered about this line E i equal to E i minus 1, that means, the successive error terms are of similar magnitude, they are almost same. So, here it says the positive autocorrelation indicates successive error terms are of similar magnitude that means, they are almost same. So, the difference in residual this difference will be small. So, that is why you know the I mean the small value of d indicates the existence of positive autocorrelation. I hope this is uh, clear. Uh, now, uh, let me go for the second case, uh, one sided test against alternative rho less than 0. So, the meaning of this one is that the originally we started with the hypothesis that rho s is equal to 0 against h 1 that rho s is equal to rho to the power of s. Now, if rho is negative uh, then this rho s is going to be uh, negative that means, uh, um, the alternative hypothesis says that there exist uh, uh, negative autocorrelation right and this can be tested by testing the same test statistics uh, uh, d. So, here it says that if 4 minus d is less than d l, you reject uh, h naught. If 4 minus d is greater than d u, you accept uh, h naught. Well, and uh, if 4 minus d value is in between d u and uh, d l, the test is uh, inconclusive. Okay, so, similar argument. So, here basically we want to test the hypothesis and we'll, uh, finally, we test uh, testing this hypothesis is same as testing rho equal to 0 against uh, h 1 rho is uh, uh, less than 0. Okay. And uh, the final case, uh, the case uh, third case, case uh, 3, here uh, we test uh, h naught rho equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis that rho is not equal to 0. So, it is a two sided alternative okay. and here if d is less than d l or 4 minus d is less than d l, we reject uh, 
H naught. Okay, so small value of d indicates that uh, there exists uh, uh, autocorrelation, and uh, if d is greater than d u, d u and uh, 4 minus d is greater than d u, then you accept uh, H naught. So, the high value of d uh, indicates that there is uh, no autocorrelation in the error and otherwise uh, the test is inconclusive. Okay. So, uh, now let me consider an example. So, this is the example I took uh, in the previous class also. Uh, this is called uh, soft drink uh, concentrate cells. Here we have uh, two uh, one regressor variable that is uh, annual advertise advertising expenditure and uh, y t is uh, annual sales. Okay. So, this is the regressor variable sorry uh, x t is the regressor variable and the response variable is y t. So, we have the data x t y t sequentially in time. So, we have the data for 20 years starting from say 1960 to 1979. So, that is of course, I mean this is then, then this, this is what we call the time series data. Okay. Such data are called uh, time series data. Okay. So, initially you know uh, ignoring that whether the uh, basic assumption while fitting uh, a straight line model between uh, y t and between y and x using the ordinary least square technique, uh, you forget about you ignore whether the assumptions are true or not, you just fit a model between y and x. Sub. So, this is the fitted straight line uh, model between y and x. So, once you have the fitted model, uh, you can compute the residuals. So, E t is nothing but the uh, observed response value and the estimated response value at, uh, at E r say t. Okay. So, once you have this uh, residuals, now uh, you might be interested to test whether, because since it is a time series data, uh, we suspect that you know there might be autocorrelation uh, present in the in the in this data. So, now we can go for uh, Darwin Watson uh, test to test uh, uh, whether autocorrelation exists or not. Well, so we have fitted this uh, model say y hat y t is equal to 1608.508 plus 20.091 x t and then we can compute the residuals right. Uh, Okay. So, now we use Darwin Watson test for this testing that uh, rho is equal to 0 against say H 1 rho greater than 0. Why we are doing this? Because uh, because since the response variable y t and the regressor variable x t uh, are time series data, they are taken over uh, time, uh, a time series data. 
So, we suspect that that autocorrelation may be present. See, in, uh, if it is not a time series data, then we do not go for uh, autocorrelation test. So, uh, well, so this is the hypothesis we want to test and uh, we have the uh, residual. So, we computed the residuals here. So, here you have the residuals uh, and then you compute the Darwin Watson uh, test statistics D which is equal to uh, here E i minus E i minus 1 or E t minus E t i and t minus 1 square i is from 2 to 20 by E i square i is from 1 to 20. So, you can check that this one is 1.08. Okay. And now, you have to find d l value from the table for, for n equal to 20, because we have 20 observations here. So, you can check from the table that d l is equal to 1.20 and d u is equal to 1.41 for n equal to 20 and the level of significance alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Okay. So, what you see that the uh, observed value this d which is equal to 1.08 is less than d l which is equal to 1.20. So, small d value indicates that there exists positive autocorrelation, right. So, since this is true, uh, we reject uh, H naught. H naught says there is no there is no autocorrelation. So, we reject H naught and uh, conclude that. that the errors are positively autocorrelated. Okay, so, this is one example to uh, illustrate the uh, Durbin Watson test. Uh, now, so uh, given a time series data, um, we, we suspect that there may exist uh, autocorrelation. So, what we do is that uh, we fit a simple straight line model using the ordinary least square technique and once we have the fitted, op, uh, fitted model, we find the residuals and based on using those residuals, we uh, compute the Darwin Watson uh, test statistics and see uh, whether uh, autocorrelation is present in the data or not. Okay. Suppose the um, result of Darwin Watson test is that that autocorrelation is present in the uh, time series data you are given. So, then the next uh, uh, issue is how to estimate the regression coefficients in the presence of autocorrelation. Okay. So, we will talk about uh, that now, the parameter estimation method, method. So, in the presence of parameter estimation. method in the presence of autocorrelation okay, uh, in error. So, 
this is called Cochrane and uh, Orkut method to estimate the regression coefficients. Okay. Uh, it says that consider the simple linear regression model with the first order autoregressive error. Okay. That means, uh, we are considering a model simple linear regression model y t is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x t plus epsilon t, but here the epsilon t's are not independent, they are uh, first order autoregressive error. Okay. That means, where epsilon t can be regressed on epsilon t minus 1. So, epsilon t is equal to rho epsilon t minus 1 plus z t and uh, this z t is uh, normally distributed with uh, mean 0 and variance sigma z say constant variance. Uh, this is just to distinguish from sigma square and this is called sigma z square and they are independent. Okay. Um, and here this rho is called this rho is uh, auto regressive parameter. or autocorrelation parameter might be. Okay. Now, how to fit uh, this model? Because here you know uh, you cannot apply uh, ordinary least square technique, because the assumption on epsilon t that is this follows normal 0 sigma square with independent, this is not true, this is not true here. Okay. So, we cannot apply uh, ordinary least square technique here. Um, so, what we do is that we will uh, transform this data y 2 y t to say y t dashed. Okay. Uh, so, we transform the response variable y t to y t dashed, which is equal to which is equal to y t minus rho y t minus 1. Okay. Then, uh, let me check let me check what is this uh, y t prime now. So, y t prime is equal to y t minus rho y t minus 1, which I can write I know that y t is equal to uh, beta naught plus beta 1 x t plus epsilon t right and this minus rho what is y t minus 1 this is uh, beta naught 
plus beta 1 x t minus 1 plus epsilon t minus 1. Okay. So, this can be written as now, so beta naught into 1 minus rho plus beta 1 into x t minus rho x t minus 1 plus epsilon t minus rho epsilon t minus 1. Okay. Now, I can write this as beta naught dashed plus beta 1 x t dashed plus z t. Uh, if you can recall, we uh, assume that this uh, errors are first order autoregressive error. That means, epsilon t minus rho epsilon t minus 1 is equal to z t. So, where z t are independent okay, with uh, mean 0 and variance sigma square uh, z. Well, so here now we have transformed the error term epsilon t to z t, where z t uh, now this transform error now error z t are, are independent, right. So, now you can apply uh, the ordinary least square technique uh, to this transform data, but the problem here is that uh, this y t prime and x t prime this transform time series data uh, cannot be used directly as uh, these two things, uh, this y t dashed which is equal to y t minus rho y t minus 1. Uh, this involves an unknown, unknown parameter rho, we do not know the value of rho right and x t prime which is again x t minus rho x t minus 1. Uh, these two are function of unknown parameter rho. Okay. So, we cannot take uh, this uh, transformation uh, right now, but let us see how to compute this uh, unknown parameter how to estimate this uh, unknown parameter rho. Okay. So, this rho is called autocorrelation parameter or autoregressive uh, parameter. So, if you can recall that uh, this rho is basically epsilon t is equal to rho epsilon t minus 1 plus z t. Okay. Now, one way to uh, compute or estimate this rho is that, uh, see we are given only the data x t and y t, nothing else and it is known that they are time series data. So, what you have to do is that you just fit a simple linear regression model on x t y t, you compute residuals and then we know that the residuals are sort of uh, observed value see E t, E t is observed value of epsilon t, right. And then we can regress E t on E t minus 1 and from there we can compute the value of rho. So, let me explain that part now. So, first what you do is that you fit 
y t equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x t plus epsilon t. So, using uh, ordinary least square technique. Okay. So, using ordinary least square technique means you are assuming that these assumptions are true uh, or you are ignoring this uh, uh, all this uh, assumption at this moment. So, you just fit a simple linear regression model between x t and y t and uh, obtain the residuals E i. Once you have the residuals, uh, then what you do is that you regress E i on uh, E i minus 1. That is, uh, you fit a model uh, like uh, E i is equal to rho E i minus 1 plus z t. See, we do not know this epsilon t, right? Uh, and ith residual is sort of estimate of ith uh, error term. Okay? So, we are regressing E i on E i minus 1. So, we fit this model, we know all this uh, residuals. So, what is this rho value now? How to get uh, uh, estimate for rho? that can be obtained by minimizing this quantity. So, we will go for the least square uh, estimate, uh, we will minimize this quantity say s rho, s rho is say E i minus rho E i minus 1 square. Okay and we estimate rho in such a way that this is minimum. So, uh, which essentially says that you differentiate this s rho with respect to rho, this equal to 0 implies, implies that summation E i minus rho E i minus 1 into E i minus 1 is equal to 0. I am differentiating with respect to rho and this gives me rho is from i is from 1 to n right, i is from 1 to n. So, rho is equal to summation E i, E i minus 1, i is from 2 to n now I have to take because of i minus 1 by summation E i minus 1 square, i is from 2 to i is from 2 to n and uh, so this is the uh, estimated value of rho and this can be written as finally, I can write. So, the, uh, the least square estimate of rho which is let me call it rho hat which is equal to E t, E t minus 1, t is from 2 to n by summation E from 2 to n E i minus 1, I can replace this as E t square t is from 1 to n. So, this is how we uh, estimate rho and now we use this rho to transform the data. So, using this estimate of rho 
we obtain y t prime is equal to y t minus rho hat y t minus 1 and uh, x t prime is equal to x t minus rho hat x t minus 1 right and then you apply ordinarily square to the transform data. You can do this because you know that y t prime is equal to beta naught prime plus beta 1 x t prime plus z t, where z t follows all the conditions of Gauss Markov theorem. Uh, I mean, um, so this follows normal 0 j sigma z square and they are independent. Okay. So, that is why you can apply ordinary least square technique to the transform data. Okay. And once you have, uh, you are done with uh, you know uh, ordinary least square I mean once you have the fitted date uh, fitted uh, model like y t dashed hat is equal to beta naught dashed hat plus beta 1 hat x t. So, this is the fitted model. So, once you have the fitted model where these parameters are obtained using ordinary least square technique. Again you compute what you do is that you compute the uh, residual E residual for this model now. So, now you use Darwin Watson test to the residual obtained from the reparameterized model. So, to check that whether still, so you you are you have applied ordinary least square technique to the transform data y t prime x t prime, they are also time series data. Now, again you need to check whether uh, autocorrelation still exists on the transform data. So, if your Darwin Watson test indicates no autocorrelation, no autocorrelation so in the errors. Then no additional analysis is uh, needed, but uh, if Darwin Watson test indicates uh, there is autocorrelation in the errors, then another iteration is uh, 
required. Okay? So, that means, uh, you apply, uh, you need to check whether in the transform data, uh, you still have the um, autocorrelation uh, using the Darwin Watson test. And if you see in the transform data, there is no autocorrelation in the errors for this transform data, you stop there, there is no additional analysis is required. But if you see that the Darwin Watson test indicates that there is exist what uh, there is autocorrelation in the error for the transform time series data, then you have to repeat the same thing once more. Um, and uh, you know, uh, you may uh, go for two iteration maximum and uh, there you have to stop. Well, uh, so here uh, we talked about the data which are collected uh, sequentially over time and, uh, and they are called time series data. And in time series data, generally uh, we suspect that uh, the observations are not independent, uh, that essentially same uh, like the errors are not independent, they are correlated. So, we need to test uh, whether errors are autocorrelated or not. For that, we have learned, you know, uh, Darwin Watson test and uh, and uh, the residual and uh, residual plots and all these things. And if you see that, you know, the Darwin Watson test uh, results uh, or indicate that autocorrelation exists in the data, then we have learned. Uh, uh, a technique to technique how to estimate the uh, parameters in the presence of autocorrelation in the model. Okay, uh, that's all for today. Thank you.